Good morning, everybody. Man, I had some trouble with my audio. This thing's not work. This thing's working fine. It's the um, laptop. Didn't want to play today. So I'm going to turn off my Sony camera. That doesn't want to. I cannot seem to get any kind of connectivity from my camera or my mic to my laptop. Hey everybody, hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our Stitchuation Room. This is a Monday through Friday virtual stitching retreat, and it's great to see everybody here, over 300 already, my goodness. Here I am, Tammy, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> technology, you guys, technology. We have the same shirt on, Donna Marie, you betcha, scrappiness is happiness, that's right, love it, love it. Let me turn these gizmos off. I don't need them. And turn the com this camera off. I don't need it. There we go. We'll just talk using the laptop today. The only thing I don't like about using the laptop is I don't have the digital zoom to be able to zoom in on anything I'm doing over here or whatever. I got a new HDMI capture card. And I tried to plug that in and use it and it didn't work. So... You know, if I was a professional, I would have done that yesterday afternoon and checked that out. I was very busy. Went to the doctor yesterday and got my stitches out on my thumb. I had a dog bite uh, back on the 29th of February, and it put me in the hospital for four days. So you love the changes with Candyland, Tammy? Yeah, that's all Valerie. All Valerie. And I, got, I found all the rest of the blocks I couldn't find the other day. So... Maybe she'll be kind enough to pop by. <laughs> but um, this card, I need this little gizmo to go from the camera to the laptop. And it rattles. Here, watch this. That's that. <laughs> I don't want to keep anything that's crap. And then I have another one. And... Uh, a cam link device that was a penny and i can't get this laptop to recognize it it did for a while and then it finally just said no and it quit my life anyway so i hope you guys are doing well you ordered stitch artist 3 whoop whoop i discovered with that stitch artist 3 that you don't have to go create design begin new design it just does it automatically that is so nice so, so nice. Hey, I got my laser yesterday for my King Quilter 2. You can order the Handy Quilter laser to point down right on the needle. And uh, I went over to Valerie's yesterday and picked that up from her. I ordered it from Fiberworks in McQueenie, Texas. They are a Handy Quilter dealer. And uh, I know, I know I can, I, Tammy says, come on, tech girl, you got this. Right. I will chew on this today some. I will play with it until I make it work. But uh, yesterday I had to go to my regular doctor to get my stitches out. And then I went to the orthopedist to look at it. And they took pictures and they said the bones are fine and everything's fine. So she, uh, <gasps> what? Sally, you go girl. There you go. That's right. The kids can have the house. <laughs> Do what you love. Absolutely. I love that. But uh, so then they put in a consult for occupational therapy. So the problem with the thumb is where we have all of these wrinkles here. So we can do this, right? We can use our Jeopardy button thumb. Uh I don't have those wrinkles anymore. So um, I can't bend my thumb. They were debrided in surgery on March 3rd. So the bite was really bad, come to find out. But the doctor was very, very happy. She said that um, it's really healing very well. She said, usually those look real bad, <clears throat> mostly from cat bites. So I live in a rural area. So, you know, the doctors around here see a lot of uh, animal injuries for sure. So, 
All right. I I got my binding on on my long arm yesterday for this quilt that I'm making. Okay. Got that on. Worked out beautiful. And I just love doing that. Uh, so I put the binding on using my groovy long arm binding ruler. Okay. And I just got it on there. Worked out good. And pressed it up open at the, I like to press my binding out. And now all I'm going to do is just wrap the binding around it and then stitch in the ditch from the front. And that is how I machine bind all of my quilts. So uh, that's on the docket for today to get that done. Oh, which reminds me, today I was going to do the uh, final finishing for the Kimberbell mini quilt at 10 a.m., I've had to back that up to 2.30, you guys, because uh, I have uh, appointments that have popped up. So I, I really want to get that done today, but I want to uh, let you guys know that. So three Laura's daughter had three hospital visits for a cat bite. Yeah, it's bad. Oh, let me give you an update on Sunny. Uh, Sunny Fox, Linda Fox. She is a, uh, she's watches the channel. She's an amazing machine embroiderer. So let me give you guys an update. Drains, she is in the hospital, had a uh, double mastectomy last week. She's over there in Virginia. So um, she's all in our prayers. Drains were supposed to come out today, but no go. Still draining a bit and have to be at a certain level, maybe two or three more days. She's, she's very gracious. She says they do tend to hurt <laughs> y'all. I've had those drains. They hurt bad, right? Where they attach at the skin. They're terrible. So then she says, um, she put this picture on her Facebook. So you guys can see there she is in the hospital. Okay. I'm glad she's been in your prayers. You guys are very thoughtful. Very nice. So, um, then she says, um, she says she got six cards yesterday. I know mine's on the way. <clears throat> she has 214 stitches and the two stitches holding the drains in have to be cut out. Ouch. Yeah. Y'all yesterday. Oh, hi, Mike. Betty Boop. That's my quilty buddy, Lisa. So yesterday when my doc, my general practitioner, he was taking out my stitches. He had these big old thick bladed stitches, uh, stitches, scissors. He had these thick bladed scissors and he's got these big old clunky tweezers and he's pulling like crazy with these big clunky tweezers, pinching my skin, grabbing, trying to grab that, that stitch and then high enough to shove those thick scissors in there. And I was like, I should have brought my snips from my embroidery machine. <laughs> I said, I got better scissors than you. <laughs> he was laughing. He goes, I bet you do. But it was hard. So uh, I told him, I said, I see why you didn't go into surgery. I mean, you got good uh, bedside manner, but you certainly, ooh, that was painful. That was really painful. Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard of this quilter. Her name is um, Paula Jo. And she owns a company called Cedar Quilts. And she quilts for others from home. And I have been watching her on YouTube for years and years and years. And uh, she's actually one of the people I learned how to long arm from. And she has a pro stitcher. <clears throat> And she offers classes online. And so I reached out to her and I have a class with her today. So uh, I'm going to let you guys know how that goes. I'm very excited about it. But one of the things that I wanted to do, <clears throat> so I don't know if y'all remember last year we did this haunted, uh, this cool little wonky houses wall hanging from fabric confetti. Okay. Well, I want to learn how to stitch 
with the pro stitcher around the applique. Okay, I want to put it on the long arm on a backing, put the batting in it, and then I want to be able to do designs all around the applique. So that is what my goal is today to talk with Paula Joe about. So if you guys have never checked out Cedar Quilts, look uh, look on YouTube. It's S-E-D-E-R. I think that might be her last name, Cedar Quilts. So she's got a great little uh, channel. She's a really, really good instructor too. So if you have a pro stitcher and you're new to that, maybe you got the new King Quilter too. King Quilter just came out with a 16 as well. I don't know if you guys saw that on the Quilt Fest from Sew Machines Plus. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Wendy says that would possibly make the pro stitcher worth the expense. Yeah, um, I, I don't know if it's restricted to pro stitcher premium instead of pro stitcher light. I don't know. So is it cedar chest quilts? No, it's S-E-D-E. -E. Let me show you guys. I'll, let me bring her up so I can show you all her channel. And then you can see who she is. But um, I'm going to take a class with her. And she only has, let's see, she only has like 9,000 subscribers. Let me pull up her channel. Okay, let me share this with you guys now so you can see who it is. You saw me on Sew Machines Plus. You know, Maureen, um, what happened? Oh, thank you. That Jen, thank you so much for your sticker. You're so thoughtful. I appreciate that. I can buy more thread. <laughs> I will put it to good use. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you can see this. There she is. This is here. This is Paula Jo, and she only has like 9,000 subscribers, okay? And I've been subscribed to her for years and years, but um, she's really very good on just the basics of quilting. Uh, and she goes through, she has a lot of stuff on long arming. So this is just a really uh, good reference. Here's your long arm quilting basics. Here's how to load it. Um, anyway, let me go back up here and I'll click on her channel. Here she is. So, and she's got lots of playlists. Okay. So anyway, very, very neat, uh, neat lady. So you can go to videos and I just really enjoy, uh, what she does and how she does it. I like, um, so here's some pro stitcher. Okay. There's all kinds of stuff here. So is your back fabric too short? That happened to me. <laughs> that totally happened to me. So she is a great instructor. Quiltmaker says she's watched her for years. Yeah, she is a great instructor. Um, uh, I, you know, instructors are very, believe it or not, they're very personal to each one of us. I can watch somebody who's extremely knowledgeable about a machine or some software or a technique but I have to be able, my brain has to be able to really focus on what they're saying. And sometimes I can't, depending on who it is. Oh, thank you so much, Peggy. Yeah, had to, we had to put our dog Harley down. She was our 17-year-old. Thank you so much. I appreciate your thoughts. That's very, very thoughtful of you. You guys are so kind. Thank you so much. You're so kind. Oh, I got to tell you. <laughs> Yesterday, when I was talking about going to Reno, <laughs> most of you got that it was humor. Most of you did. Y'all, I got a piece of hate mail. Woo, man. <laughs> oh, that was something else. Telling me I forgot where I came from. You know, crass. Oh, it was, it was something else. I, I let my, uh, I read it to my husband. And he goes, do you think she unsubscribed? I said, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. You guys, I was kidding. Okay. But then a lot of you are like, I've already bought my tickets to Reno and I'm on the way. And then another lady on Facebook said, do you want to share a room? Cause I know you want to go. <laughs> oh, I got 
on hate mail. Oh, well, I publish a list of all that I'm doing on the Halloween blocks. Katie, I'm, I'm going to, um, oh yes. Yes. So on the happy Halloween quilt, this is what she's not talking about this haunted Halloween here. She's talking about this. Let me show you guys. I'm getting ready to do a sew along in May. So y'all don't get mad at her. It's fine. Whatever. So, so I'm doing this happy Halloween quilt. Okay. I'm going to do a different video for each block on doing this in the embroidery machine with, um, <laughs> me thinks they gossip test too much. We even cover Shakespeare on this channel. How about that? Yeah. It was hilarious, Angela. You know, some people just need to lighten up. That's all. Just lighten up. It's fine. Anyway, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to release a block a day while I am on the Sew and Sale 14 cruise, which is 10 days. So you guys will get content the whole time I'm gone. But uh, yes, I will be taking you through how to do each one. I'm getting to a point now where, so I'm already shooting the how to's, but I'm stuck because I don't have my fabric yet. I'm like you guys, everybody, uh, you love the Reno. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is funny. You sent it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that that's absolutely right. That, you know, that's fine. You know, we, it's fine. That's too funny. How did you miss that, Tina? I don't know. You were, you were missing it. Life is too short. There are those people. That's right, Paula. Anyway, y'all, we don't need to focus on that, but I just couldn't believe it. I forwarded the email over to Betty Boop and I said, well, well, <laughs> it's fine. No big deal. You know, and, and, uh, accused me of, um, of uh, forgetting where I came from. And you guys, uh, it's precisely because I remember where I came from that I uh, am where I am today. So it's all about strategy, right? You have to be strategic in your planning. I've always been a strategizer, always have, always been a strategizer. Okay. <laughs> that was funny. I got hate mail for that. Oh, yeah. Not brave enough to put it down in the comments because y'all would just like. <laughs> I was just being funny. Okay. I need to. Oh, what else did I want to tell you guys? Oh, y'all are looking for on Wander Lane fabric. And I had one of you send me an email uh, about a shop that has got it. So I went and looked at that shop's website and they don't do online shopping. So, uh, the problem with that is you guys will buy it out right away and then they will spend a week answering the phone telling you they don't have the fabric anymore. So it's better for a shop to have an online presence where you guys can just go there. You can hit the link and you can go there and look. And if it says sold out, you go, okay, they're sold out and you don't call them because what happens is, is y'all will like zoom in like killer bees on a fabric that on, you know, on a shop that's got the fabric that you want. I was kidding when I said, y'all don't get all wound up. Jeez. You know, if you can't take my humor and sometimes it's dry and sometimes it's sarcastic, you guys, there's lots of other channels to watch. Okay. I, that's fine. <laughs> As Paula Jo says, toodaloo. <laughs> anyway, um, what'll happen is, is you guys will zoom in on that thing and the shop is totally unprepared for what will happen, completely unprepared. So I always make sure that the shop has got an online presence that can support that kind of um, customer influx because it can be very, very disruptive to them, to their classes and to their staff. They've got to hire somebody or have somebody come in extra just to answer the phone. And it's hard. And then they will run out of product super quick. They'll sell it in the first two, three, four calls. Then they don't have it anymore. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> you guys are having a good old time over there in that chat. <laughs> uh, 
if you're new here, pop in the chat and say hi. Let us know that you are here and um, that you're new or maybe it's your first time to take the, you know, pop into the chat and you've been watching. Is there more than one shop that's selling the kits? No, there is not, Tina. No. Uh -uh. Um, nobody. Well, so here's the thing. You, what you need to do is just call around to quilt stores and ask them if they are carrying the on wander lane fabric. Um, I found mine on Etsy and I've got a link below to the shops that I found it from on Etsy. Okay. Um, it, yes, right. It's just virtual water cooler chat. That's right, Carol. You're absolutely right. So, uh, but you know, around the water cooler, it's not the same for everybody and that's okay. That's, that's the thing when you put stuff out online, people, uh, people, you know, you never know how people are going to take things. So I'm just always been a very practical girl. And, um, if you were younger, you might buy a ticket to Reno. You're too funny, Flo. Flo, you never know. <laughs> and you know, the thing is too, uh, nobody says you got to get married because at our age, you don't want to give up your benefits, right? That's the thing too. Of course, you got to weigh the pros and cons on that. Anyway, I need to change out the foot on my sewing machine so I can stitch up this binding. Let's see. So yeah, call around and either look on Etsy. Like I said, I've got a link below or call around to fabric shops and ask them. See if they have fat quarter bundles or they may have yardage. So um, I got all of my whisper weave from the fat quarter shop. I just went through there. Was it fat quarter? Might have been a different shop. I can't remember. And I just went through and I ordered half a yard of all of the pieces that they had because, you know, now I'm doing the mini quilts. And if you're new, what I'm talking about is this on Wander Lane. No, my bunny still doesn't have any eyes. So this on Wander Lane mini quilt. OK, we're doing one of these each month. And what I'm doing is, is scanning in the pattern into the scan and cut and then taking that file from the scan and cut, putting it into embroidery software and creating the applique. So the scan and cut cuts out the fabric and the embroidery software creates the design and that is called snapplique. Okay. So <clears throat> let me get up close so you guys can see how perfect it is. And then the little grass. And the words were digitized in the Brother Luminaire. Okay. I got a little thread I need to get off on that. There we go. I had a thread over my E. So I'm all about using our fancy machines to make sure uh, that I don't have to do this by hand. So I don't want to stitch that manually. Okay. And um, then you know, we put it together and it's all ready to go. Okay. I still need to get myself a little hanger for this. Anyway, <clears throat> I know I'm going to make more than these. So this is a good little uh, exercise to do something very small that doesn't take a ton of fabric. You can, uh, you can use, you can source your own fabric, but some of you want to use the on Wander Lane lines the line, they have one and two for fat quarter bundles and then they have yardage. But this background fabric here, see that blue? That's called whisper weave. Now the eggs and the bunny fabric and the binding are from the fat quarter bundles. But the background fabrics are whisper weave and it's by Benertex. And that is what she uses. The fat quarter bundles are by Nancy Halverson. Okay. So the whisper weave you can get just about anywhere, but the fat quarter bundles are by Nancy Halverson. Debbie wants to know if Stitch Artist 2 or 3 will be better than Simply Applique. Stitch Artist 2 and Simply Applique are pretty much the same thing as far as how they function. The simplicity comes in with Stitch Artist 3. So you got Frank digitized in Floriani. She says, there's no stopping me now. <laughs> we have a
have a good time in here, Kyle Lord. <laughs> we have a good time in here. Lots of fun, lots of fun. Which fabric? Well, Deborah answered your own. You answered your own question. I'm looking over at the camera that's not on. The fabric line is called Land of Enchantment. It's by Moda. The fabric line is called Land of Enchantment. If you can't find it, call a quilt shop in New Mexico. Any quilt shop in New Mexico should be carrying it because it would be considered a local fabric. Sarah um, wants to know, how can you tell if it's there? If Once you put the serial number in for your upgrade to Stitch Artist 3, go into help at the top of the thing and hit on serial numbers and you'll see it. Let me share that with you guys. I'll show you how. I'm not going to show you my serial numbers, but I'll show you how to find it. Um... You come up here to help and then hover over serial numbers. And when you click on that, a box will pop up and it'll have all your serial numbers in it. That's how you do that. So. Yep. You're new and you want to see how Embrilliance works. You guys can go to a website. It's in brilliance.com slash demo dash versions. And you can choose which versions of in brilliance you want to play with. And it will download a demo and of whatever. You can check which boxes you want. So if you want to see the difference, see the problem is when I let me do this. Um, slash demo. Oh, demonstration versions. There it is. Okay. Let me show you this. I hope you, I don't think you can see the URL, which is the web address. I think it stops like right here at the top. Up here, I'm looking at embrilliance.com forward slash demonstration versions. Okay. Not demo, but demonstration. So you can click the Mac demonstration version, download it right here. And here's the Windows demonstration version. All right. These downloads are non-saving demonstration versions. And here you can play with the manual and the PDF page and all that. Okay. So you can go ahead and download these. And then when you open it up, it's going to ask you, uh, what do you want to play with? And like I told it, Essentials and Stitch Artist 3. And that opened up and that allowed me to play with the reconstruct outlines, which let me know that's worth the expense to go ahead and get that. Yeah, that was worth it. Nancy, what's the name of the company I mentioned while making the April mini quilt that had snips and other cutting tools? That is tool. Tron, T-O-O-L-T-R-O-N. That's a little company up here in uh, Bolverde, Texas, just north of me. And they have that. So Tool Tron. Uh, Laura Koya from So Very Easy. She uh, works with them quite a bit. She's an affiliate for them. So your scan and cut 225 needs an update. Yep, got to do that. Okay, so I'm going to change out my foot to my stitch in the ditch foot. Let me move this. I don't need this here anymore. This is in the way. I'm going to move this. I'm going to make sure.
the best I can do. And if you just joining me, my laptop absolutely refused to connect to my digital Zoom camera this morning, giving me attitude. So I'm going to have to have a conversation with this thing and uh, tell it what's what. Yeah, well, I got to get to work. You bought Enthusiast Thumbnailer, Stitch Artist 3, and Essentials. Kelly, you are ready to go. You are ready to go, my friend. You can do anything with that. You haven't lost your mind. You bought the tools you need for your job, right? You got to have the right tool for the job. My dad always used to tell me that. Use the right tool for the job, girl. I said, okay. Okay. You're afraid. You're not going to miss out on a good story, Carol. Go ahead and go get your coffee. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> I need a navy blue bobbin, and I don't believe I have one. I have black. Is this navy blue? No, it's black. Sunny's texting me. She's feeling good if she's texting you guys. Sunny Fox, she's testing, texting me. So I need to make a bobbin. Of course I don't have a bobbin. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? If I had a bobbin. Let's get this going. I'm using uh, Connecting Threads Essential Pro Midnight. Oh. Connecting Threads is having a sale on Thread, like 40% off, a stock up sale. This is a poly, Essential Pro Midnight. This is what I'm using. And I use their Essential Pro White. It's kind of an off-white, but it's a matte, and I really like it. This is what I use for all of my piecing. So, And then I need to, I need a navy blue bobbin and I need to find the end. I'm going to spend half my day. There we go. All right. This thing's going to rattle around, make all kinds of racket. That's all right. But I want to get this thing finished and out of my life. Everybody's saying hi, Sunny. I don't know if she's watching, but uh, she is texting. She just texted me. But she's still inpatient at the Navy Hospital there in Virginia. Now I need an empty bobbin. Do I have one in here? I should. Yeah. All right. I usually go around this thing about 10 times. This is a Hema Pro bobbin winder. Get it started. And then I'm going to go under the spoon once and under the spoon, the cutting spoon again, and press the start button. There we go. That'll work. You bought in Brilliance on Friday. Yeah, good. Um, Carrie, we I've got a whole playlist on in Brilliance. I love in Brilliance because there's so many other instructors of it out there on YouTube that you can get free training as well. So find somebody that makes sense to you and follow them and learn. That Cheryl, that is the thread that I quote with. It is uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh stop. I was talking to y'all. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> y'all won't believe what just happened. Oh, 
was talking to you guys. <laughs> I overfilled my bobbin. It had a big old water thread up all over the top of it. Oh, man. All right. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> Pay attention, Thompson. Get your head in the game. That's too funny. <laughs> oh, my word. What a mess. See, now it's too big to go into the, uh, too big to go into the bobbin case. <laughs> Multitasking. I need a, um, something small. Here's a little Q-tip. This might work. Let me put this through here. Let me pull this off. Yeah, I just wasting thread here. Going along. Talking with y'all. Oh, my goodness. The things we do, huh? Oh, dropped it again. Dang it. Oh, the the Q-tip kept it from rolling all over the floor. man. <laughs> you know, what happens is, is you do that. And then all of a sudden you get flustered and you're like, how do I turn it off? How do I stop? And your brain doesn't work. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm connecting threads. I actually have a, a, a call with them today about something. I don't know what they reached out to me and they said, Hey, we want to have a phone call with you. And I said, okay. We can do that. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, they're wonderful. I like them very much. I've I've used connecting threads ever since they first came out. Um, and I met several of the team from connecting threads. Oops. At uh, Quilt Festival and Market. Very nice people. Very, very nice people. My doctor told me, keep using your thumb as much as you can. Got to do that. Put thread in empty, clear Christmas horn. Ah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> there we go. This is good. Okay. So I've got white on top, navy blue on the bottom. All right. Let's get this quilt finished up. You say, man. I should make more than one bobbin of the same thread, but I don't have another empty one right here. And I'm talking to you guys, so I'm busy. But, you know, it's that navy blue is still on there. So when we get done, that's a good idea, Michelle. I probably need to do a couple more. All right. I'm ready to go. We are ready here. I love this method of that stitch in the ditch foot from Ken's sewing is so good. I'm going to put my coffee down or else I'm going to spill it and I will not be happy about that. So I hate man handling these big quilts. This isn't even a big quilt. Yeah, I'm, I'm turned on here. How's it look? Invisible on the front, looks great on the back. Life is good. Yeah, I wanted the blue because this is the binding here. And if I if I did a white, it would be super, super obvious on that blue binding. So yeah, I've got my hanging triangles. Thank you, story time. Yeah, I got my hanging triangles right here. I have four of them. I used eight inch squares. 
So what she's talking about, if you're new, you take a, you take a square of fabric, 10 inch, eight inch, in the case of this, six inch, whatever you want, right? And you fold it in half in a triangle and then you fold it in half again. And then you take the long raw edge and you enclose that in the top of the quilt. And then all you have to do is stitch down the little point and you have a little hanging sleeve. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. One of you told me about that. I went and checked out the video and it changed my life. So, and it's Laura Koya from So Very Easy that has that. So I, I did four of them instead of uh, larger ones, like three larger ones. I did four of them because I want to use um, the hang it, dang it to hang this on the wall. And um, that has to have the little, where it hooks onto the wall is right in the middle of the quilt. And so I can't have a triangle there. I need to have a triangle on either side of it. So it's gotta have space for the hanging thing. Do you guys do your quilts? Why don't I use my weightless quilt holder, Becky? Betty, you know, I could. I would if I had a bigger quilt. This one's not that bad. This one's only 40 by 50. It's not that bad. I need to put a label in it. Uh, yeah, this one. I get my lab labels from Dutch Label Shop. Dutch Label Shop. These are printed DutchLabelShop.com. Yeah, matter of fact, Avi, I learned about the Hang It, Dang It from Joy. So I got one too. And um, they are very easy. So I'm going to put this right here. Fold it over. And put a pin in it. And then the way I cover my corners is wherever I'm turning to, I fold that over first. The side that goes down, I'm going to fold that over first. And then I fold the other corner to it. You can do it either way. doesn't matter. That, just, that way it's just easiest for me to get a nice, pretty miter. And then I take a pin. Can't get any closer, you guys. Then I take a pin and I pin, make sure that those corners are pinned right next to each other. So that's how I do my corners. But I can get this thing stitched up in about 15 minutes. You have SD650. Yeah. Yes, you can. Uh, D, you certainly can. Let me put your comment up so people can see. Can you do the snap applique with the old CM models? You certainly can. Yes. You don't have to buy a new machine. Um, you can't transfer to computer. You downloaded Canvas. Need to clean up scan. Which video can I watch to help you learn? You can watch any of my scan and cut videos. I have a playlist for scan and cut. Um, if you're having trouble transferring it to the computer, when you go to save the scan of the FC of the applique pieces, just save it to USB. And then you can take the USB to your computer if you're having trouble. But all models of scan and cut, CM or SDX, 85 to 330D, does not matter all of them create those FCM files that you'll want to put into in brilliance. Yeah. It works great. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, you can just cause it's an older model does not matter. It'll work exactly the same. You're trying to get that vector graphic and all models of scan and cut will give you that. And you do not need a brother embroidery machine 
in order to do this. You can do it with any home embroidery machine. So it doesn't matter whether you have a Faf or a Janome or a Husqvarna. It's the embroidery software that turns that vector graphic into your applique design and you save it in the software to your home embroidery machine format. Coming up on my label, pull that pin. There we go. Ow, get stuck here. Let me put that in. That's not nice. I used a nice dragonfly pattern on this that was inside of Pro Stitcher when I bought it down in that hole. There we go. So I didn't even have to, you know, get another, go buy in a long arm design or anything. So that's nice. The Pro Stitcher comes with hundreds of designs in it. I need my stiletto. So this is what I use my stiletto for. Oh, y'all, my husband restocked the store site with the Seam Ripper stiletto combos. He makes them in the shop on his lathe. PowerToolsWithThreadStore.com. So they got a nice handle that you can, arthritic fingers can hold, and it has a stiletto on one end and a stainless steel seam ripper on the other. Lots of different colors. So restocked. So let me show you how, how nice this is coming out. There's the front. I can't get up close enough just yet. Let me get some more space. Hold on. This is such a cute little quilt. This was red, white, and bang from... Riley Blake uh, by Sandy Gervais. I think it was, yeah, it was Sandy. I'm sure this was hers. I hate not having that digital zoom. There, now I have some more room. Okay. Yep. No, nope. still can't do it. I need some, another foot. This is the Brother PQ 1500. They've come out with another one, 1600. I tried to find the difference between the two of them. Am I using Stitch Artist 3 to remove hidden stitches? Yes. I do, Kay. I do have a video on that. On my videos, um, she's wanting to know how to remove those stitches behind overlapping applique pieces. On my channel, search for the word troubleshoot applique. It troubleshoot, and it'll it's one of my most it I did it within the last two weeks, and it's one of the situation room videos. Yeah, this is the bottom of the quilt. No okay. card. Okay, I think I can get this up here close to you guys now. I'm going to show you how good this looks. This is stitching by machine. See? See how that the white thread is invisible up in there? Okay. And then here's the back. That's what you got. And it works perfect. Absolutely. Per it's not an heirloom thing, you guys. I don't hand stitch my bindings. And I don't apologize for that. I've hand stitched one king size quilt binding. I will never do it again. My hands are, I've got arthritis. I've got osteoarthritis.
Ah, I didn't trim this one right. Mm hmm. Okay. I did not trim that right at all. What was I thinking? Way more than a quarter of an inch. Nope. What a mess. Ooh. That was more like three eighths. That makes it hard to pull the binding over and cover the stitch line. I don't like that. Is that enough? Barely. Ugh. I don't like that. I was getting stuff all wound up up in there. No good. Okay. You guys, this quilt's not going in a show. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to see it but me. I don't get all wound up about. That's not how you do it. Okay. Okay. Let's try this again. Oh, much better. Yeah, that feels right. Okay. Yeah, this is a stitch in the ditch foot. And you can go to kensewing.com and in the search box, type in the word industrial. And it's got a, uh, a foot and it's, it's split. The foot is split and it allows that thing to flow over one half of the foot to flow over the width of the binding and the flange that sticks out to split the two is very thick so it keeps the needle in its place on the lower fabric very easy Pin that half down. Pin this down. We don't need any piggy noses. No piggy noses, right? <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. Y'all are so funny. We have such a good time in here. If you're on a, a mobile device and you're watching the replay and you can't see the chat, um, touch some of the three dots down below and uh, slide them one way or the other. This is what I am told. Oh, that's not going to work. Dang it. That is not going to work. I got to fiddle with this a little bit, you guys, to make it work. I don't want to have to have that thread underneath. A piggy nose is when you don't have a real pretty miter. It kind of looks like a fat little piggy nose. It's a bad corner on a miter is a piggy nose. <laughs> yep. Uh, does that foot from Ken's have a letter on it? It doesn't. No, it does not. Just look for the word industrial. And y'all, it only works on the industrial machines. Don't put it on your Luminaire. Don't put it on your Stellar. Don't do that. Okay. Yeah, do a thumbs up. That would be very cool. Very, very cool. All right. Let's see. Now I'm all covered in thread and I'm ready to start the day. Yeah. I've got uh, this morning... I am working on the design that we're going to do at Mull Queens. I will be at Mull Queens Sewing April 5th and 6th, just a couple weeks. And poor Darren, <laughs> he's probably wondering if I'm leaving him hanging. 
Yes, Becky. I said the thread is polyester. I like poly thread. I quilt with it. I piece with it and I bind with it. I use these. This is my binding and my piecing thread essential pro from connecting threads. I buy it by the cone. And right now they're 40% off. I'll put a link below. So, um, I'm stitching right now. This is the brother and it's almost an industrial machine. And um, Frito's hanging out with Keith right now, Julianne. Uh, it's the brother PQ 1500. I've had this for years. They've come out with a new one. If you can get the 1500 still, I got it on Amazon. I got a link. In my, it's in my Amazon store. Uh, if you can get the 1500 still, go ahead and do that. Because I looked at all the specs on the 1600 and they look the same to me. You might, it might have a little bit more space in here, but if so, I don't know what. No, Frito has not snubbed me, free spirit. <laughs> yeah, um, but I only piece with that poly thread because this machine does not like cotton. If I put cotton thread in this machine, every time I hit the thread cutter, it unthreads the needle. The, the thread has to be strong enough uh, to withstand that trim, that chunk, chunk, that heavy, y'all know what I'm, you know what chunk, chunk is, right? So it has to be have, uh, strong enough to withstand that. And only a poly thread other, when I was using all my orophil and I love orophil, don't get me wrong. But when I was using orophil on this, every time I would cut it, the needle came unthreaded and I just got tired of it. So I went to a poly thread. I tried a stronger thread and it works. So, so all right, you guys, our hour is up. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for starting your day with me or ending your day if you are down on the other side of the world. If you're watching the replay, thank you for taking time and spending it with me as well. You guys, uh, give the channel a thumbs up if you would be so kind or the video a thumbs up and subscribe and we can spend some more time together. So we always have a good time in here. You never know what we're going to do. All right, y'all. Enjoy your day. I will see you tomorrow. You guys go sew something. Bye.